All right, fellas, boys and girls, here we are with the Arcana Heroes Cup playoffs. And we have our first game already in the draft phase. It's SK Gaming versus Playing with Pain is Pain. And I think we can just about uh, jump into the draft. They're currently banning, so let's do this. Um, the first ban went to PPP, and they banned Abifer, of course. By the way, if you're wondering which uh, draft we're using here, it's the ESL uh, style draft. So you get the ban, uh, you get the first ban for both teams, then one pickup for the top team, two pickups for the bottom team, uh, two pickups for top team, one pickup for bottom team, and then two additional bans, and then individual picks afterwards. Okay, so apparently they got a new one. Okay. I don't know. Uh, okay. Always, always screwing up the drafts. Sorry for that. But sometimes it doesn't work, and then players have to send me a new draft, and well, you know the deal. Okay. You already sent me the one. Okay, that works. That works. So let's get started with the new one. Totally expect Abfer to be banned again, and yes, indeed he is. So there we go. Abfer being banned by Playing with Pain is Pain, and we have Tychus banned by SK Gaming. Awesome, Mopsy, you're giving constructive feedback for the cast. Uh, all of you can, if you want to. Um, always looking forward to feedback, whether it be good or bad. Well, I mean, the feedback has to be good, but it can be about bad things I'm doing, so. Yeah, sure, ahead. Uh, sure, go ahead, do that. Um, I'll just send the draft over to the French casters. And I... Th no! That's awful. I just got word from Luvi that um, Bakery is sick. Um, one moment of silence, please, uh, for Bakery, your favorite uh, Heroes of the Storm player. And of course, you can send him your uh, well wishes on Twitter. It's twitter.com uh, slash the newer bakery. And I think it will probably help him. So go ahead, send him your, um, your wishes. And uh, maybe he'll get better soon. All right, so we have the first picks incoming. It's Stitches on PPP side. Then SK Gaming took Falstead and Tassadar. And an early pick of Zero Tool here by PPP. By the way, the map is Garden of Terror, just to get that out of the way. Huh? Just have to keep the French casters updated as well. I mean, uh, they want to check what's going on, and uh, for some reason their draft wasn't working. So don't mind me. I know what feedback is, of course you do. Um. Okay, the next pick is Valor on PPP's side, so this is the final pick f before the next round of bans for SK Gaming. And since they, um, since PPP already picked two assassins, they will probably go for uh, their assassins later on. And instead, uh, I I would suggest going for their um, support now. Um, so maybe Ufer, if they like to play him. I mean, Uther uh, felt that com combination just a nice way uh, to get started with that Wombo combo. Uh, let's check. Unfortunately, for some reason, I can't have like all the, well, the entire uh, avatars and the timer in there. So, I have to make do. Okay, Anubarak is their pickup. And now on to the f uh, second round of bands. Okay, um, well, they already took um, they already took their assassins and one warrior. And on SK's side, we have, well, one all-out assassin, um, one semi-assassin and a warrior. So maybe, since they won't get, oh, they will get the next pick as well, so... 
Mm. What would make sense here? Vela has already been picked. If they're scared of SK's Zagara, um, I would go for that. But they choose Tyrael, which makes sense. Uh, just a single warrior taken by SK so far, and most teams right now do favor that sustainable meta um, where they take a bruiser heavy teams. Alright, so the next ban is up for SK. And actually I'm I'm kind of curious why PPP went for Zero Tool, even though we have tested on the opposing team. Does lessen his impact a little bit if um, if Tessiter is doing a good job with his Oracle and just popping that constantly, always having the Oracle available, um, kind of uh, yeah, kind of puts a blow to Tess uh, to Zeratul's face. All right, and we have a ban on Ufer. I've not seen that in a while, but it does make sense. I mean, they haven't picked up uh, their support. Neither of these teams have, so um, their main support at least. So I guess it does make sense. Alright, so the next picks will be individual picks for both of these teams. And let's see, it's Brightwing being taken by PPP. So SK can go for their warrior now. I'm looking for Arthas right there. But I guess someone like Zagara would work as well, though I don't know if her impact of, on Garden of Terror is quite as good as on the other maps. She can probably be outplayed if you play your Garden of Terror right. Okay. And they have about 20 seconds. There it is. It's Shen. Okay. Um, one of those heroes that we see a little bit more of lately. And he is also um, one of the one of the best warriors uh, as far as survivability goes. Um, he can always pop his ultimate and split into Earth, Wind and Fire. Was it Earth, Wind and Fire? No, that's the band. Earth, Wind, Storm? No, that doesn't make sense. Earth, Fire? Storm? Oh, something along those lines. So um, he can split in the in the three aspects and that gives him an amazing survivability. But yesterday in a couple of these games, players were um, kind of missing missing the exact spot when to hit that uh, heroic because um, I saw um, at least twice uh, Shen was dying just because he didn't hit his heroic on time. Which is just, oh, wait, no, that's a joke, right? That's that. That's gotta be a joke. <laughs> it's Nova. Okay, never mind. Okay, ignore the murky. Um, it's Nova. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they gotta play murky now. <laughs> wow, that would have been amazing. Um, okay, if they would have to play murky, um, SK Gaming has a good chance of taking this. And I mean, PPP doesn't have bakery, so um, SK definitely has a good chance taking this, uh, no matter what. But oh wow, um, I mm, Luvi doesn't want to accept <laughs> doesn't want to accept Nova. No, I think he he will he will. It's all good. And final pick is Rega. <laughs> Your problem. <laughs> okay, I think um, I think they're good. Uh, so it's gonna be Stitches, Zero Tool, Vala, Brightwing, and Nova. And on SK Gaming's side, we have Falstead, Tassadar, Anubarak, Shen, and Rhaegar. Leak for Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> um, this is actually a, a single cup, Arcana Heroes Cup. And that's the first one, but I think since they named it the Arcana Heroes Cup 1, uh, there's probably gonna be more. Um, I think it was a huge success. They got 100 euros in Battle.net balance, uh, so you can put those into heroes for um, uh, for the first place at least. Um, I like that quite a bit. 
And I think uh, they're planning on um, yeah going into additional cups later on. So give me your feedback, guys. Um, these guys are streaming, by the way, on twitch.tv slash arcana, arcana gaming, which is the French channel, but you can just drop by, say hello, and say uh, thanks for the tournament. <laughs> okay, it's it's Nova, not Murky. Okay, so we have uh, Rapsalia cheering for PPP, of course. Even though, um, yeah, Bakery is not playing. Is Bakery in chat, by the way? Should be. Bakery, get your ass over here. You can stay in bed, but like have a tablet or something to to watch the stream at least and cheer on your fellow players. Okay, I think everyone. <laughs> I have no murky, so sorry. Um. Ooh, EKB with the BM. Calling them cowards for not playing murky. Um, I think they're about ready. So we should. Be getting ready and get started with the game here. Yep, there we are, loading into the map. Garden of Terror it is. And well, I'm looking. I'm looking at the draft again, and I'm kind of uncertain. Of course, the murky um, is a big turn on, but it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, and then. It's it's kind of weird to say. I think we could just gotta check out what talent route um, SK is going to take. Um, I have to say that uh, EPP is a little bit more traditional, but also a lot squishier. And we've seen these uh, squishy compositions fail and fail again lately. Um, and especially on Garden of Terror, I'm not too sure about it. And there's also the fact that Bakery is not playing today. So um, that's a big blow for PPP, and having those three assassins, of course. I mean, if if you can um, if you can take out the tanks early on, then um, you're in a good spot. But that's gonna be tough, especially with Shen on the opposing team. And then you have um, a Nubarak who can dish out the line stun. Um, you have Falz that I can follow up with the shock and all. That's a um, pretty big um, composition lead for SK when. If they play the cards right, of course. Alright, loading, loading into the map. And there we are. Now, time to find out who's playing on which side. That well, looks about right. Alright, guys, here we are. Um, just gotta swap those logos, and then we'll be ready. Yep, that works. All right, awesome. On the top, uh, on the left side here of Dragonshire, we have our blue team, SK Gaming, and they have BZ on Tassadar in the top lane. They have Descape on Anubarak in the mid. Linked is playing Rhaegar. Zarmini is playing Falstad, and Chen in the bot lane on B uh, BKB on Chen, of course. <laughs> Uh, their opponents in the red trunks, it is playing with pain. They have Luvi playing Brightwing, and she's going top. Then we have Harry Hook, um, who I'm not too sure about. He's probably the um, yeah the replacement for Bakery, and he's playing Valor in mid. And we have Pain himself on Zeratul, and he is the gang squad alongside Jella, who's playing Nova. And Stitches is taking Bard, and he is played by Vipolino. All right, let's let's have a look at these gang squads and how they're doing. So far, um, Nova and Zeratul not really making anything happen. But let's check out on the opposing side of the map because we have Nubarak and Rhaegar going for the easy camp here. And this is going to take a little bit longer. Usually, you see two warriors going for it, or and a stun heavy warrior like Nubarak and an assassin. But uh, Rhaegar, I mean, he can deal a little bit of damage. It's just going to take quite a bit longer. And we jump over our gang squad. They're on their way to Feldstad, but he can heal himself back up. So getting there a little bit later. But of course, that was a nice idea. So let's see, I think they spotted that the camp was being taken. Nope, it got there a little bit too late though. So we'll have to see how this all um, happens in the end. Level 3 now, up 4, playing with Pain is Pain. Initial talents were Deadly Strike on Shen, um, Extended Spikes on Anubarak, the Healing Totem for Rhaegar, Overload for Tassadar, 
and Brightbon felt that. Then we have Nova taking Ambush Snipe, um, Bribe on Brightwing, Rancor on Valor, Heavy Slam on Stitches, and Greater Cleave on Zeratul. Now they're going for Gathering Power. Oh, Chen was taken out, sorry about that. Gathering Power on two of these heroes and the Arsenal on Valor. Alright, SK going, uh, going for the plants right away. And taking out the first plant terror on top. Looks like it's the same thing for PPP. But they're taking a little bit longer, didn't have their entire team here. And now SK is moving into position. They're looking to go get a gank here. But uh, unfortunately for PPP, they get out of there before De Desperate makes his way into, into that position. And Jello not being spotted out. So that's of course a big help here, having two of these uh, invisible heroes on their team. And Zarmini might be in trouble, Valor's in position. Nope, he does get away one more time. With the dash, um, it's pretty hard to get Falstad, but if you do uh, catch him off guard, um, being in, middle of in the middle of the lane, or um, somehow out of position, then you can get him down pretty, pretty fast, because he's so incredibly squishy. And the easy camp has been taken again by Rhaegar and Anubarak. Nova and Zeratul not making anything work so far. Um, they gotta be a little bit more roamy in their in their way of playing this. And BKB, this might be his chance. Uh, and he's body blocked by the hologram. Good job, uh, Jello making a nice work of his. And yeah, that was just an impeccable placement there on the hologram. Wow, we gotta check out the easy camp here. Looks like, oh yeah, SK Gaming going for the steal. Valor should have noticed this, that Falsa was out of lane, and now she even might be in trouble. At least she needs some help here in this mid lane, and there we go. PPP is coming in, Falsa is taken out, Rhaegar is on the move, and there is another stun that could come in here. Oh, don't even need it. They do take out Falsa and even the Nubarak in that follow up. Pain is in trouble, but he does get away. BKB couldn't, couldn't make that work. Had to rotate back up to mid, so that did take a little bit of time there. And now the gate is already gone here in mid lane, and Harry Hook still dealing with those uh, easy camp mercs. And almost two levels ahead already for PPP, and they got five kills. That's pretty incredible right there. I mean, uh, so early on getting five kill lead, but that's that's the assassin composition they're driving here. So. Uh, that does give you a little bit of an early game lead, but it can all turn the other way once um, once the other team gets level 10 as well. But if they get a couple of good team kills here early on, that would help out immensely. And Zarmini again, so incredibly low! He's down to a couple of hit points! And does make it to the mana well. So fine for now, but there's the steal on the Knights. Incredible timing here by PPP. Uh, will they actually go for um, an enhancement on these Knights? Will they help out the Knights? Nope, the hook misses, so I don't think they're gonna gonna help out here. Everyone will return to their lanes, and there's the bribe on the giants here by Luvi. All right, level 10 is now up for PPP. They took Precision Strike on Nova, Emerald Wind on Brightwing, Rain of Engines on Valor, Gorge on Stitches, and Void Prison on Zeratul. And there comes the push on the bot lane. Kane is already in position, the hook's missing, and so far only Rega and Felsted to defend this here. That's not nearly enough, and BKB is coming in, Noob is coming in, oh Tassadar, he's on the move, but it's gonna take a little while for him to get here, and at least uh, a couple of buildings will fall. Minions are up there, they will get the banner well, oh there comes the move in by BKB, but he goes straight into the gorge, there he goes, burp out, and yeah, taken out of course. Uh, with a nice polymorph follow up here out of Luby. And down goes the fort, or does it? Yeah, they still have the Siege Shines in the back, and SK decides to abandon this defense. That wouldn't have worked out. Instead, grabbing a couple of seeds, yep, and the bribe on Falstead here on the top giants. So a couple of more seeds will be grabbed here by SK, but also PvP going for their seeds. And we have a little bit of a split here, going on, um, going for the giant, uh, yeah, the garden terror and the seeds on the side as well. And DKB is spotting this, but I mean he's a little bit in a dangerous position there. 
but he wanted to check, okay, maybe we can surprise him uh, in this attack on the on the giant. Now everyone returning to lanes. I think PPP wants to go for, um, for the attack while they're still dealing with the giant. But let's see if they can make it work. Deathscape is caught out of the position, but with a deep dive, of course, he always gets away. But they get the steal on the seeds. That's an incredible move out of PPP. Goes to show how strong these guys have gotten in the last weeks. And now there comes the push on the top lane. Um, we're probably going to see a little bit of rotation here by the Plantera. Um, laying Siege to the top lane and then going back towards the mid lane. And there we go. Uh, Siege is being laid on. The gate falls. And he just dishes out the damage while PvP stays in the back. So far no one getting exposed. There comes the stun of Death Cape. Uh, only getting the Garden Terror. Ooh, now SK moving in with their own Garden Terror. But uh, no one's getting caught out of the position yet. Try to get the overview here. Uh, Bipolino is a little bit low, but they're doing decent damage here on this encampment. And, ooh, there we go, Pain is jumping in, but of course, da dashing back out again instantly. Jella only with the mirror down there. And Bipolino doing a nice job just saving his team here, body blocking the, uh, body blocking the opponents. And BKP, he's in there, he just jumped in, he's taking a lot of damage, but there comes the ultimate. And... It did some decent damage, but BKB is still up. He popped his ultimate as well. And Luby, Payne, and Harry Hook on the run. Jella quite low as well. There comes the storm, but she does get away for now. They have to retreat behind their own lines. But BKB, he's incredibly low. His ultimate is up, and the split is back down. There comes the false that's shock and awe. Taking out Brightwing. And ooh, Harry Hook out of position there as well. But oh, the hook out of Vipolino saving him for a little bit. There he dashes away. And oh, running into the storm. One for two so far for SK. Keeping Chen alive was just so vital in that engagement. And now, still, oh, there he goes down. And oh, they might even get so many. No, he dashes away, but they will get the top four. So two for two in the end here. SK um, making a good fight of this, but I don't think they will keep their four alive. Luffy jumps in there, builds Vipolino back up. They still have a decent amount of mana and even Pain jumping back into the fight. So yeah, two levels ahead and taking out a single fort. Also, they took out the fort in the bot lane. So um, that happened before and now we will see a grab here on the mercs. Yep, there's the bribe on the easy mercs and the hard mercs are being taken here by Luby, uh, Valor and Jala. So let's have a look at their talents. Uh, level 10 talents for SK were Storm, Earth and Fire. So that's what they're called. Uh, Locust Swarm. Ancestral Healing, Archon, and Shock and Awe. And then we have uh, Chikness Plating on the Nubarak, Relentless on both Stitches and Shen, and Rewinds, lots of Rewinds going on. Feldstad, uh, Nova, and Brightwing. But let's jump back into the fight. We have the next Garden Terror up, and he's ro rotating down, uh, surprisingly, even though um, the encampment was already gone there. And so far, PPP is still... Uh, in a good position as far as their um, defense goes. The gate is up, but barely in the mid lane. And now Vipolino rotating back up. And they're looking for an assault here on this fort. There we go, Siege is popped. And PKB outside, he needs to watch out. There comes the jump down on get Jella, popping her holo immediately and the shield coming out of, uh, out of right wing. Keeping her alive for a little bit longer, BKB drops the pups the road again, and the Emerald Winds keeping them back. So far, no one really wants to over over engage here. And ooh, BKB jumping in again. There's the escape and the shock and all getting a good shot at Jella, but they will retreat. Vipolino trying to stop SK uh, in this yeah in this chase. Harry o barely getting away, and yeah. No one being taken out so far, but Vipolino, he's quite low, he needs to watch out. There comes the slam to keep him back. There's a really cautious engage out of PPP, but um, SK also making sure not to overextend in their defense. And they did keep their forward life, so um, that was the main issue here. Keeping that forward life and not losing out on any more XP. They can't, uh, they can't give up their fort without a decent fight and at least taking out a couple of heroes. Oh, there comes the surprise move. BKB comes in. Vipolino is body blocked down there. Can he get away? Yeah, looks like he can. Oh no, BKB jumps in once more, one more time. But then taken out by Vipolino. He really wanted to get that kill, but they did take him out in the end. And Orbital Strike not doing all that much, but they... Oh, there comes the hook. But the escape, of course, not the best target to hook. He can always get away with his deep tunnel. 
Wow, but they did uh, they did divide um, PPP uh, in that engagement, so they could have made it work, but then without Shen, it's just a little bit harder to um, get uh, keep your team alive. Oh, Falset being taken out here. Oh, and another good hook on Ling, but the ancestral healing coming in, keeping him alive. And there's the Void Prison getting busy and linked. This is the time for uh, PPP to strike. There is the strike. Emerald Wind pushing, pushing Link back. Uh, probably not the best move, but they do get him in the end. And there's another amazing hook out of Vitalino. BZ, of course, does get away with his face shift. And DKB is pretty low one more time. There comes the stun. Anubarek saving BKB in this engagement. Whew, what a game so far. Um, SK really has to step it up right now. Um, they have a couple of seats, but they need some more if they want to go for the next Garden Terror. Um, BVP right now going for a little bit of a dangerous move. Uh, dividing their team, going for, going for seats all over the place. And Shen was taken out one more time here. Um, a little bit surprised about that. But now we have everyone going back in. Uh, Pain apparently did, did go for the kill there. Assassination attempt on Shen. And now they have their next plant, ter plant terror in the works. Let's see if Stitches can pull someone out here. He won't have a follow up, but he does get the escape. Uh, not the best choice, but of course with the prediction hook, uh, you never know what you're gonna get. There's TSS Wiz. Hey, how doing? Always nice to see those regulars getting back into the chat. Alright, top lane, uh, mid lane is pretty low for SK. And ooh, nice stun, nice prediction stun out of the escape. And with that, of course, uh, people pay can't go for that assassination or gank attempt there uh, next to the uh, giants. And yeah, mid lane is still up and at a decent health pool here on the fort. And yeah, I think they will have to go for a lane now of their own. Uh, choosing, the, choosing the top lane, probably a good idea since the gate is already down and um, they have almost all of their heroes up here. Uh, who are they missing by the way? Well, oh, they have everyone except... Has destroyed a fort. Where is Shen? Okay. That's weird. Okay. Um, we'll see what happened to Shen later. <laughs> oh, Shen. Oh, of course. Shen is in the plant era. And defending this fort for now. But, um, yeah, PPP is doing a good job just sieging on here. We'll get one of the towers at least, and then, yeah, it's, it's pretty low already. They probably get the gate as well. And PKB almost popping out of his ter uh, Garden Terra. And there the gate does go down. Where's the initial engage? Deathcape had a nice stun here. This would have been the move, but BKB missing of course. So without that jump into, into the mass that is PPP, it's gonna be troublesome to get the initial engagement here. And BKB does pop out, so I'm waiting for the initi initiation by him. But look at that, look at that positioning out of SK. Always having their heroes a um, little bit split here. And game jumping in. DKB now going for the follow-up. But getting polymorphed right away and taken out by Nova. Quick on the trigger finger there, Jella. And now the keep is in trouble. Shields coming up, but without Shen, it's hard for them to take it out. Oh, Zamani pretty low. Orbital strike coming in. But not quite taking him out. There's Valor with heroic. And Jella is pretty low as well. Luvi needs to heal her back up, but I think they have this under control. BZ needs to get out of there. Even though this is an Archon form, he's still taking a lot of damage. And they are all pretty low, but Brightwing is now taken out for, S uh, for PPP, which means they should play this a little bit safer, since all of them are pretty low right now on the HP scale. And um, Mana also not one of the most abundant things right there for PPP, especially Pain. I mean, he can always just blink out of there, but he needs to watch out. 
And I think this is still okay for PPP. They're a um, little bit ahead still, uh, doing a good job in the team fights, and they got uh, rid of most of these lanes. The mid lane is still standing, so I would have liked them to see um, and go for that mid lane instead. Oh, Jella going for Death Cape. They want to disrupt the steal here. BKB jumps in. I don't think he spotted Jella, but Vipolino, he's being body blocked there. I don't think he can get away. Nope. There he is, taken out. Jella will escape. Pain also able to jump over the wall, but oh, BKB tries to go for the follow. Oh, now they have to make short process of that, of that gate. And looks like they can go for the Garden Terror now. BKB not opting to go for theirs. I think they want to get that team fight in. Even though both teams have their level 16 talents, which we should check out if we do have the time. Uh, rewind on Anubarak and Blood for Blood on Valor. Fishing Hook of course on Stitches and now they want to make their move. Pain jumps in, oh that escape so incredibly low but Ancestral Healing coming in at the last possible second here. Oh, maybe they can get the steal on the Plantera. Pain jumping in there one more time, Valor with an amazing heroic and Shen is taken out oh so quickly. Oh, that was an incredible, incredible Void Prison, getting Link, Zarmini and Beezy, but they do get all of the seeds. The escape is still pretty low, but I don't think they can get the final blow here. Uh, looks like all of SK will get away, and Chen will be the only pickup for now. But with Chen missing, um, they're missing a vital part of their team, and so they will go for that fort in the mid lane. And, yep, Harry Hook even coming in. There's the final blow on the fort. And that does give him a little bit more of an XP boost and of course helps out the minions here, taking out the uh, forts, or keeps rather, and um, the walls that surround them. And yeah, just going for their own seat. Uh, let's check out some more of these level 16 talents. We have the combination attack on Shen, making his flying kick a little bit, a little bit better. Then the Earth Grass Toten, um, making... Uh, making his totem cast a root as well, Dimensional Warp on Tassadar, and Overdrive on Feldstad. Crippling Shot was taken by Nova, and Hardened Focus coming out of Brightwing. Then Fishing Hook we already talked about, and the Double Bombs for Zeratul. And now it's time to go for the camps. Oh, Rega, he needs to watch out. Pain is in position. They don't quite notice him. Oh, Rega coming in, coming in. Jella. Needs to stay safe though. And they will get the bottom forward. So nice forward up pickup now coming in for SK with the knights. Um, but I think, yeah, PPP is just going to stop these knights um, from advancing on towards the keep. Nova and Pain are in trouble. Jelen not taking the right route there. All of the gates are almost gone down in the mid lane. The Knights have been taken out, so EPP is in a good position. And SK will port back to deal with the Garden Terror. They wanted to go for a little bit of a run by here, but the gate is not quite gone. And now with uh, the remainder of SK just making their way to the defense here in the top lane, um, I think that Vipolino will need some support if he wants to do some serious damage here. But oh, look at that. Backdoor attempt coming in by... Um, PP, and they got the keep for free. That is, and always nice to grab a free a free keep, because now they have the catapults coming in, pushing out a little bit more damage, and they're ahead. They have level 20 right there. Let's check out their level 20 talents. Ooh, bolt of the storm and three heroes, and resurgence on stitches. Brightwing, of course, took the continuous wins, giving her a little bit more charges on the wins. And now they're dishing up the damage here, just laying siege to that keep. It's already, it already took some damage, but not too much yet. And they will put out a little bit more damage on the Polino before they try to go in and commit to this fight. They really want to take him out. Pain just jumping in, dishing, dishing out a little bit of damage and then jumping back out. And looks like PvP is going the safe route, getting out of there before it's too late before Bibolino pops out of the Plantera. And... Are they looking to rotate towards the mid lane? No? Wanna go for one more engagement. And the hook missing this time. Bibolino doing a good job. Initially he had an amazing hooks coming in this game. 
So I'm looking forward to see a couple more. But they're just doing the dance of death here uh, around the keep. SK of course not trying to give them too much engagement area and ain't dropping down the bombs. Another hook miss here. But of course he doesn't want to get in range of BKB and there comes the engagement of BB BKB but Payne of course jumping out straight away. Oh the Emerald Winds are coming in and pushing BZ into the Void Prison. BZ and Zamini caught in the Void Prison. There comes a the good hook and the Gorge out of Vipolino. He did get BKB, but BKB is on the hunt. He wants to get Pain. Pain pretty low. He's cloaked again. Can get away. Oh, Vipolino trapped there. Good body blocking coming out of SK. But Tesla does go down. There's the double stun. And Vipolino again trapped, but he, he's being helped by Harry Hook. And Rega is taken out. There goes Stitches down. And Deathscape almost being taken out here by Jella. Good team fight coming out of uh, PPP. Oh, Deathscape still making work of this, but Jella with the final takedown. 2, 4, 5. Incredible fight by PPP. They do have a little bit of time to go for um, for the Mercs now. Luvi bribing top. And it looks like they might go for top again. Nope. Choosing, choosing to go towards mid. A uh, little bit surprising. I mean, they did get the gates down in top. And the keep already took some damage, so I would expect them to just focus down the uh, pressure here on top. We still have 10 seconds remaining on Tassadar. And yeah, they're just dealing out the damage with the Siege Giants in the back. Jell needs to watch out, he's pretty low. Shouldn't overextend that. And they will get the keep, no issues whatsoever. And the plant seeds are up. SK only needs 8 more to grow their Garden Terror. Meanwhile, PPP still 70 seats to go before they can they can go for their channeling. And opting to go for the easy seats first. Of course, uh, Stitch is just now making his way back. Uh, never mind, um, Zeratul just now making his way back. And with the entire team, of, they can go for their Garden Terror. Not going for their Knights yet, that's a little bit dangerous. Um, you do want to get those knights in before all of the seeds have been taken. Um, otherwise, the camps, of course, they disappear. So now, it, yeah, more, more, and more seeds being taken, and not quite ready uh, for the camps yet. They're looking for a surprise engagement. Lino missing his hook. Pain is jumping in, jumping back out. <laughs> And missing that engagement on uh, on the Garden Terror. Alright, who's going to jump in the Terror? Probably um, BKB again on SK Gaming's side. I'm not too sure why exactly they went for BKB. I mean, um, he can overextend a little bit more if he wants to and put on the pressure with the Garden Terror because he can usually get away. But then he's also missing the fight, so you can never really take an engagement while you have a player in the Garden Terror form if you if you send BKB in there. Now there is the grab on the Siege Giants and Ain scouting out what SK is doing. Uh, we have Resurgence of the Storm and Anubarak and Shen. Twilight Archon and Storm Shield on Rhaegar. Uh, Blast of All on Felstead. Uh, Twilight Archon most of course on Tassava, sorry about that. And PPP making their way towards the mid lane. They want to get this last keep. They want to play the safe. Luvi's in there, caught out of position a little bit. BKB jumping in and he's surrounded and taken out in a sack here by Nova. Now SK pretty low, but BKB of course coming back with the resurgence. Luvi pretty low. She just popped her ultimate, so there's no escape with that. Harry Hook coming in with the with the heroic himself. Pain takes out Rhaegar. And BKB back again in the fight. Tassadar was also taken out here. And Zamini is still on the hunt. He wants to get someone out of PvP, but they play this incredibly safe. They all took a little bit of damage. So they want to make sure not to overextend at all, but Vipolino doesn't want to get there in there alone, so EPP will rejoin here. Pain jumping in, he wants to get the escape, jumping back out again. And Harry Hook onto the key, Vipolino, he needs to dish out the damage here. 
There's another siege laid down on the keep and he moves straight for the core. Keep is taken out two levels ahead now, now one level ahead right now for PPP. PPKB, he's taking a lot of damage, but you know, now pretty low as well. He should probably get out of there. But Descape, they get Descape. And with that, one more warrior gone. He will be back though. Chen pretty low is one more time. Falstead doing a lot of damage here on, on Luby. But with the Emerald wins, she can keep SK back on the left side. Jenna incredibly low, but they do take out the core here. Wow, a little bit of surprise here. PPP, even though they had a replacement and Bakery couldn't play, taking out SK with just solid domination um, from beginning till end. Uh, it didn't show on the levels, but teamfight-wise, they were just on fire tonight. So let's have a look at the at these stats. 19 takedowns on Val by Valor, 17 by Stitches, 21 by Nova, and a Zero Tool also on 21 takedowns, and only dying a couple of times. Then uh, Shen dying 10 times on SK's side. Um, he, th that's something you don't see every day. Uh, Shen dying all that often. But I mean, he he made the sacrifices to uh, keep his keep his team still in the game. Uh, didn't quite work out in the end, and I think uh, having Chen in that Garden Terror was probably not the right decision. All right, fellas, that was the first game. Unfortunately, maybe I did capture a replay. I have something here. Let's check it out. Um, I don't know which one this is. I captured something. Uh, this was... Oh, this was close to the end. But um, let's have a look nevertheless. While the players will send us the next draft link, hopefully, soon. Alright. I'll show you guys. Okay, there we are. Yeah, so BKB was always trying to get the initial engagement in. But they need the follow-up out of Descape. And Descape was still in trouble right there so BKB just dying in the crossfire he was completely surrounded between uh, Jella, Harry Hook and uh, Vipolino there so no way for him to get out and no f real follow-up possible that's of course one of those issues you have to deal with if um, if you take that warrior heavy composition and have no real long-range uh, engagement possibilities out of uh, out of your assassins and then PPP playing this so safe. They always retreated when uh, when they get low. Every hook um, putting on his heroic here didn't do all that much damage, but the Void Prism saved the day again, catching BZ and Descape. And Link was pretty low here as well, and they took him out. So they always used the opportunities just so well, and in the end, um, won almost every team fight except one um, early on. So let's skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, this was the engagement on the keep. Vipolino laid down siege on the keep and EPP stayed in the back, did what they could, but didn't overextend. And then Vipolino, he knew, okay, I I did I did my uh, I did my deed, I've done my deed on the keep, and now PPP will take up the keep by by themselves. Uh, Vipolino moving straight for the core. And of course the keep can just be taken out so quickly. And Vipolino laid down Siege on the core, already getting the shields down a little bit. And then again, I mean, they always saw, okay, we need to get out and once Vipolino is pretty low. Once we have our our player that's currently in the Garden Terror um, with a low HP, we need to get out of the fight. Otherwise, uh, everything might turn, even though Rega and Tessa were, Tessa were gone in that fight. And we can jump straight into the draft which is currently in the banning phase for PPP. So, of course, the first ban was on Abathur, as expected, as we see every single day right now. Wait, was there a disconnect on the stream? Doesn't look like it. But uh, Twitch has been having problems lately, so I wouldn't be surprised. Stream is up, right, guys? I hope it is. And a ban on Tychus by PPP. 
Stitches is being first picked by SK, so they realize, okay, um, Vipolino on Stitches was just insane, we need to counter pick him, otherwise we run into problems early on. And Tassila being taken by PPP, so that's their counter pick. Um, Tassila was of course an SK in the last game, but he, I mean, I don't think he used this oracle all that much, otherwise it would have helped out a ton, since Payne was always stalking the entire map. He was always checking for individual heroes that could be picked off. And the next pickup, Anubarak. So two counter picks coming out of PPP. Let's see if SK is gonna continue counter picking as well. Now I'd kind of like to see PPP also going for Shen, just to see if they can um, improve upon the Shen play. Um, this is game 2 now. Game 1 went to PPP. And it's Uther and Felstead. Last game um, I think SK got the ban on Uther. So they're gonna take him, take him themselves this time. And Ufer is just one of the uh, best choices as the main support. With the Divine Storm and later on Divine Hurricane. If you want to go for that, some some players do go for, um, go for Resurrection, but I don't think it makes that much sense. I think the Divine Hurricane is just so much stronger. And if you have two other warriors in your or two, two warriors in your lineup, then uh, going for um, resurrection on them would make a lot more sense. Okay, and PvP grabbing Zero Tool one more time, and there's the ban on Nova straight away by SK. Okay, um, so they realized that Nova was a big deal in that last game. And if you let the Nova get out of control, um, if she gets, uh, if like if they have a level advantage, then Nova just gets so incredibly strong, uh, even with a t tiny bit of level advantage. But that also, um, on on the other side, it also means that uh, if you fall behind with her, then man, does it take a nosedive. But let's see the ban out of PPP. Maybe if they're not picking Shen themselves, maybe we'll see a ban on Shen, since only a single warrior has been taken so far by SK. Uh, I think last game we saw a ban on Tyrael. Okay, that's interesting. Leaving that Tyrael option open, it's a little bit dangerous. And he's being taken straight away. Of course, SK jumps on the <laughs> jumps on the bandwagon. Oh, Tyrael, that that is a pretty incredible combination right there. Uh, Tyrael will always try to go for the initial um, the initial fight opening, and then uh, you have Uther to try to jump in there, get the additional CC off. Fails up with a follow up, and then Stitches will pick off whoever's left. Uh, excited to see what their um, last assassin pickup is going to be. Still have lots of viable options here. Uh, of course Illidan could could work as well. Um, Valor would be an option. Oh, Rainer on PPP's side. It's interesting. Um, he's found a way back into the meta lately. We see him picked again and again, um, especially on NA, I think. Um, I'm not too keen on him. But uh, he's also one of those heroes that just goes really well if you want to pick someone off um, with, a, with the Banshees later on. And the final pick for SK is indeed Illidan. So I... Oh yeah, okay. It's gonna be Brightwing on PvP's side. So going for um, a little bit of a weirder mix. But they have... Two uh, straight on assassin, one semi assassin, warrior, and brightwing. By the way, the map is cursed hollow. So I I do think that Rainer makes a lot more sense on that map. Um, I mean, he's pretty strong overall, anyways. Um, there's a little bit of break in coming for SK. I need like one or two minutes. 
Yeah, so I do think um, Rainer, Rainer is pretty strong overall, but especially on Cursed Hollow. Um, if you can um, boost your minions on that map, man, they can just push so strong. Tesla, of course, also a solid option on Cursed Hollow. Um, one storm into the minions, they die instantly if you have the curse. So yeah, all pretty um, map-specific choices on PPP's side. SK Gaming, on the other hand, uh, a little bit more of those um, really yeah, flexible and regular pickups as far as their draft is concerned. Um, Uther, Turiel, felt that uh, those guys you see in almost every game. And then Stitches, if you can get the pickup, sure. But this was mostly a counter pick, I feel, after seeing the Bellino on Stitches in the last game and how he picked them apart in the early game. Yeah, they had to. Uh, they had to either go for a ban on Stitches, and you really don't want to go for um, the ban on Stitches if you can ban uh, Abathur. Yeah, so they have uh, a pretty, um, a pretty tanky uh, lineup, uh, sustaining lineup. But then Illidan, of course, Illidan and Felts that really make this work because with them you do get the ability to hunt down heroes uh, to take out low, um, low health targets. And I think, yeah, the, the Wombo combo that's possible with um, both Tyrael, Uther and Felts that is pretty incredible. And even, like, if you, if you don't play it conservatively, but instead try to go for the pickup, um, pickup composition and have Stitches go, go for the hook, and then Tyrael jumping into the target, I don't know, I mean, it's not as worth it um, as uh, for a real, a real team fight situation, so to say, but... Um, I mean, you can still make it work, and then there's Ufer to put out another stun, and Felts and Illidan to finish him off. But I'm still thinking that SK will probably go for a, a more standard team fight setup. The peel on PPP is perfect for Reyna. The peel? Okay, so I think they're about ready to get in the game. Um, yeah, Reyna, yeah, Reyna does deal an incredible amount of damage. Um, he also has pretty, uh, pretty high base damage, and with the minion, with the minion boost he gets, yeah, he, he's incredibly strong in Cursed Hollow. So PPP, maybe not with the basic composition, but still, um, they're in a good spot to do this to make it happen and uh, go for 2-0 but i wouldn't count sk gaming out just yet i mean uh they have the most standard composition you can go for and they're they're an incredibly strong team They're currently second place in the hpl uh ppp is in third position if i remember correctly so yeah um i wouldn't count them out just yet All right, and we're loading into the game. Let me just fix the score. And hopefully we won't have anyone lagging us out. Nope, looks like we can z jump straight into it. And this time we'll see a little bit of a swap of sides. So, watch out. On the left side, this time on Cursed Hollow. We have our blue team, Lane with Pain is Pain. And they have Luvi on Brightwing in the top lane. They have Jella on Tassila in mid. Pain playing Zero Tool. Vipolino playing Anubarak. And Harry Hook playing Raynor in bot lane. Their opponents are down one game and really need to win this one if they want to stay in and maybe go to the finals of the Arcana Gaming Cup. Um, we have Uther on. Uh, linked on Uther. We have Tyrael played by BKB. We have Zeratul played by Zarmini. Deskape is playing Stitches. And Felset is played by BZ. And they are SK. And ooh, Pain is in a little bit of trouble. Zeratul and Tyrael not quite in position. Deskape is looking for a quick pickup here, but no, he's been tagged. Oh, there's a pull on Nubarak. He does have the last stun available, but not going for it straight away. Um, yeah, Illidan was a little bit out of position to go for the follow-up here. 
So instead, they will go ahead and grab their easy cam. Of course, Tassila is taking the mid lane one more time. Uh, usually seeing Tassila there. Uh, ooh, I think I think they know what's up. Yep, we have Pain, Jella, and Vipleva moving into position, but oh, BKB spotted all of this. So Deathcape and Zamini will get away. Nice hook coming out of Deathcape, but there was no follow-up possible. Zamini wasn't quite in position. Oh, BKB wants to go for the follow-up on Pain. He's pretty low, but with the shield, uh, he should be fine. And Jella's in position to shield him one more time. There comes the Oracle, just to stay safe. Pain moving back into position. Meanwhile, uh, let's have a look at Raynor down in bot lane. And how he's handling himself. Of course, always staying in range here for the XP. And uh, so far, not really boosting his minions all that much. There comes the boost. And he already got some damage done here on the gates. And uh, the towers lost a little bit of ammo as well. So you can see his pushing power. And he's just doing pretty well so far against uh, Faults there. But he needs to watch out because Stitches is waiting in the bushes. And that's always the danger here if you go for that solo lane. But they do have, um, yeah, they do have Zero Tool in the Nubarak. Just moving around the map, scouting out if they can pick someone off. And yeah, they want to go for their easy camp now as well. And by the way, Stitches and Illidan have returned to their easy camp and will go for that now. But just a little bit later than they really wanted to go for it. Um, maybe like uh, 40 seconds. And the easy giants are on their way down bot lane. Gather tribute. For SK, now the same thing will happen here on PvP side. First tribute is up, it's in an in amazing position for SK. Still no sound. There should be sound. You guys have no sound? And there comes the disrupt out of Vipolino. Kane moving in again, they need another disrupt. Ooh! Escape doing a good job peeling him back in. And Vipolino being stunned and body blocked here, but he does get get out of it with a deep dive. He be going for the channeling. And SK just letting this one go. They were just uh, pushed out way too far and Pain and Vipolino already so low. So uh, they didn't want to risk it, didn't want to lose more heroes or one hero here. Um, since they were so incredibly low. And the first one is not as important. So first pickup does go to SK Gaming and now they will go for the Knights on their side. I don't know, this is gonna take a long time for Zamini and Deathcape to get rid of these Knights and Pain's moving in and spotting it out. But they don't have anyone else in position. Nubarek is going to get there, but it might be too late. Oh, Pain wants to go for the steal, and there comes the move. Deathcape getting double stunned, and Zamini pretty low. He's being polymorphed, and Deathcape will go down. There's the steal. Good timing by PPP, getting that amazing steal in. Oh, BKB in trouble as well. Pain following him up, but he's too close to the fort. He can't get away. Nice, uh, nice first blood here for PPP. And the steel, of course, on the knights, which are pretty strong early on. Um, took a little bit of damage on that tower and got rid of quite a bit of ammo. But now we have the next tribute coming in, and um, we have the next tribute coming in, and it's again on SK Gaming side. Pain is moving in. Ooh, he's pretty low though, and Deathcape is trying to trap him. Looks like he can get out one more time, but ooh. BKB jumping in and Zero Tool is taken out and with one hero down I think they have to let this one go as well. They don't have the damage anymore to really take him out uh, in time. So this does put them in an awkward position. They need to get that next tribute and they couldn't really make all that much happen so far. I mean the, the knights were a nice addition but not, not quite the breaking point for them. Now we have SK going for the boss, doing short work of him. And also the same thing happening on PPP's side, but they got there a little bit later. So not quite the perfect timing and SK is already getting in position. Oh, Greenout Bakery is not playing tonight, uh, unfortunately. 
but you can have them here in spirit. Just press uh, or enter exclamation mark for uh, bakery. Uh, good positioning coming in uh, for PPP, and there comes the next tribute. A good position for PPP, they can't lose this one. They need to pick someone up right now, and looks like SK has to go for the defense since the boss is on its way. Boss also in top lane for SK, that's doing some damage here on, on the first fort there. And there comes the hook on Luvi, with the shield, can't keep herself alive. Boss still working away, winning away at these gates. And the first tower falls, the gate does fall. The second tower completely out of ammo, and there is the... No, no pickup yet! BKB wanted to go for the disrupt, and did a good job there. Holy Morph does come in. But I think they kind of missed their timing window here. Oh, the hook by Deathcape missing. That was quite unfortunate, but the disrupt sits spot on. Vipolino being disrupted there. And we have a good job uh, by Harry Hook, just trying to defend Vipolino, but he doesn't quite get in there with his, uh, with his channeling. Oh, BKB on the run, Zarmini being singled out, there comes the Polymorph, they do a lot of damage on him, but his rogue is popped, he does get out of there, Shock and All coming in, doing a lot of damage on Luvi, and Luvi does go down, oh, Void Prison completely failing here, but BKB caught out of position, running into the Void Prison, but they're still fine, they're still in a good spot, took out Raynor and, and Brightwing in that engagement, so they have a good chance to go for the pickup, 2 for nil here on, uh, on SK's side, Vipolino wants to try it one more time. Kane there to helping him out. Ooh, interesting. SK not going for um, not going for the last tribute. But since Cheryl was so low, I don't think they they wanted to risk it. So instead we'll go for the next tribute. Meanwhile, PvP all back in the game. And they wanna go for their knights now. Everyone's moving into position. Uh, let's check out the talents where we do have a little bit of downtime right there. So level 10s are Emerald Wind on Brightwing, Archon on Tassadar, Locust Swarm on Inuvarak, Void Prison on uh, Zero Tool, Rainers would be Raiders and Judgment on Tyrael, Metamorphosis on Illidan, Gorge on Stitches, and Divine Storm on Uther. Falset took Shock and Awe. And Tassadar was picked up, I think, with a hook here. Knights will be coming down the mid lane, but SK going for the steal and the easy camp. Pain spotted it out. But so far, PPP not really in a position to stop this, and Felset, of course, with a bribe. There's a little bit of damage coming in on the top lane next to the keep, but the tribute is way more important right here. Tribute is spawning, Link going straight for the channeling. Oh, Deathcape, he's in trouble, he's being picked off, there comes Polymorph and they get him. BKB also in trouble, they single him out initially, oh, there comes the Shock and Off, Pain is pretty low, can he get it away? Yes he can, and Tyrell is picked off in the end here. And that's a good team fight coming out of PPP, and they go for the channeling now, it looks like it. Most of the long range initiation is gone on SK's side, and there comes the pickup for PPP. Incredibly vital, they want to follow it up with the Knights, and go straight for him. Right now Stitches and Tyrell are gone, that means no engagement possible for SK, and an easy pickup out of PPP. What a nice way to come back uh, after that disastrous pickup in the last team fight. Oh, Vipolino caught out of the position, but uh, Zarmini doesn't want to engage here full on. Oh, there's the hook on Vipolino again, and the Gorge! But, oh, Deathcape waiting for just a sec that um, burst them out, and he does go down behind the wall. No way for PPP to save him. And Raynor needs to go to bot lane to stop these minions. Already doing a lot of work here on the gates. Towers both out of ammo, so got in there just in time. And yeah, this fort might be the next or the first one to fall here on PPP's side. Gate is pretty low, Zamini still dishing out the damage, there comes the final blow on the gates. And the next tribute coming in, ooh, SK already completely in position with the entire team. And they try to go for the zoning attempt, Descape wants to go for a pickup. And PPP so far not really getting there. And they're all bunched up, incredibly dangerous right there. There comes the stun out of Anubarak, Descape has to watch out. Ooh, Zarmini jumps in there, Luvi with the Emerald Wind. 
can push PKB a little bit further back and Shokunar coming in, not getting that much damage done on Pain. He stays alive and Ruberek is taken out though. In Deathscape, he is shielded so he can get away. Zarmini on the hunt, he wants to go for Pain and Pain can get out there for now. But Harry Hook, he needs to watch out. There's a hook coming out on Jella. He will stay alive for now. And ooh, SK incredibly low. Maybe Jella and Harry Hook can go for it. But Linked is making the turnaround happen here. There's a shield. Zarmini returns. And another gorge. Pain is in trouble, but he wants to go for Link. And he does get the final blow. Wow, and Deskape missing the hook. Pain gets away for now. And he's still cloaked. He can still do this. Meanwhile, BKB is coming back into the fight. And Zamuni trying to hunt for pain. He needs to watch out. He's so incredibly low. Wow, what an incredible fight. We have to look at this later on. And just to see what the heck happened here. BKB wants to go for the channel one more time. We still have the cooldown on Raynor. And both both Tassadar and Raynor are out. Zaratul is still incredibly low. And yeah, SK getting back into this fight. Going for the channeling one more time. Hazel and Reyna are on their way now. Still about 10 seconds out. So Vipolino needs to needs to stall this fight. Here comes the stun on Jella. But with the phase shift he does get away. BKB jumping in and they single him out. There comes the follow-up stun out of an Uberak, keeping him alive. Chokonar missing. Jella's still alive. Zarmini is on the hunt. And Tyrael uh, moves in. Takes out Raynor. Zarmini still onto Jella, but now he's Polymorph, taking a lot of damage. Pain will take him out. Yep. Final kill here done by Luvi. So Illidan is down on SK's side. Tyrael also incredibly low, but they did take out Raynor and Nubarak, and there comes the pickup on the curse. So PPP is cursed right now. And they need to show us some nice defense on these lanes. So if we have a split push coming in, nope. SK going for the top lane. And the top forward will fall in no time. Red team has destroyed PvP it. trying to defend bot lane. And yeah, they need more than one hero here, so Pain will join them as well. Get a little bit of damage done, get rid of those minions. And they will go for their boss now. Which is okay since the curse is only up for 25 more seconds, so the minions shouldn't do too much damage on the walls next to the top lane peak. But this is a nice early game uh, for SK so far. Level advantage, team kill advantage, and getting one fort. There comes the port back, and they will go for the defense on the keep. Meanwhile, SK is pushing down mid lane. And Pain and Harry Hook not quite getting there in time, so getting almost three forts in one curse, that's pretty incredible by SK. There comes the boss. We still have three heroes in position, so I think they will be able to deal with this boss. But SK, they're waiting. They want to go straight for the mid lane again after this. Meanwhile, PPP's boss is still on bot lane. Felt is the only one moving down there. And Pain spotted this out, but the knights have been taken by SK. So they will have to deal with them first. But I think Jell and Pain will make short crosses of these guys. And the next minions shouldn't do too much damage either. Well, the boss is on the wall. So they got a nice timing here on the boss. Did a little bit of damage, uh, took out a fort at least, and pushed on this bot lane kept SK on the defense instead of going straight for their bottom fort. Let's have a look at the level 16 talents. Hard and focus on Brightwing. Dimensional warp on Tassadar. Rewind on Anubarak. Double bombs on Zero Tool. Bolt's Eye on Raynor. Um, Blood for Blood on Tyrael and Illidan. Then Pulverize on Stitches. Gathering Radiance on Uther and Overdrive. Um, so Stitches is going for the Slam build here. Giving him a little bit more teamfight control. Knights have been captured for PvP. I don't know how they managed to do that. A pretty incredible, uh, pretty inc incredible feat. And the Easy Giants are pushing down on bot lane. But ooh, Harry Hook. I think he was gorged here. Yep, there he is. 
lurped out and straight into the Void Prism with him. There comes the initiation by Material and Rainer is already taken out. The Bellino back in the fight and ooh, he's being body blocked, but they go for Luvi straight away. He's taking so much damage. Yep, taken out in no time. Luffy does go down on SK's side. And Zero Tool taken out as well. The Bellino is solo, but even with the shield, they do take him out. Gel in trouble as well. But he's the He's on the horse. Mounted, he should be able to get away, but... Oh, Stitches. He wants to stop him. Oh, yep. And he will. Storm coming in. And no follow-up yet out of SK. They, they are moving their heroes up here now, but... Yep, there's Fels that... Ace Shift coming in. Oh, the hook missing. That was incredible. Maybe Jella can get away now. But no, BZ is coming in. Zarmini from the other side. Oh, Jealous run. That is where it ends. Rainer has to move down bot lane to deal with these giants. And that was a pretty incredible fight for SK. Taking out 3 for 1. And this does give him the kill advantage. Um, 7 more kills, 1 level advantage. So they will get to level 20 a little bit faster. Right now going for the steal on the, um, on the giants there. Zero tool and uh, Stitches went for that I think. Oh, zero tool interior. Now they can move in one more time to try to get a good team fight while they wait for the camps to be up, back up again. The next tribute, by the way, is really crucial because EPP could still make a turnaround happen here. They have two tributes already. Who shall gather this one? And it is coming in again a nice position for SK. It's on their side of the map, they all have almost all heroes in position. And... Oh... EPP wants to go for the watchtower first. Hiding in the bushes, Zarmini is already in position, there comes the stun out of Vibolino. And again channeling by BKB. Oh, Vipolino's being hooked and body blocked at the same time. There comes the stun out of Link. Vipolino completely trapped up there. Oh, the Void Prison not doing all that much, only catching BZ. And there comes another stun. Oh, nice shock and all. Getting Uber. And Harry Hook still dealing the damage. And Nuberak goes down. Tyrael is pretty low, but BZ needs to get out of there. He does get manage to get to the fountain and pain in trouble as well. Harry Hook does come in to help him out. KB again pretty low. Easy coming back into the fight. But PPP still has this. If they can make uh, if they can get one of those guys up there. Pain, he needs to watch out. Always getting so low in these team fights. PKB managed to run away here. But the final pickup is there for PPP. How will they push this? It could go for the boss right now, but I don't know, I don't think it's that advisable. They should go for a couple of kills here on the forts. Mid force taking some damage with, the, with Rainer and Jella in position. And Luvi jumping in, Jella in trouble, Polymorph goes down. Uh, Jella wants to get away, but Harry Hook, he's following him, but he's pretty low as well. BZ wants to go for the kill there. BKB jumping in, Harry Hook being healed back up by Luvi. And they will run away for now. Next minion wave is coming in. And that should do a little bit more damage, but they want to go for that mid lane. Anubarak back in the fight as well. And with a noob and Tassila there, they could go for it, but nope, switching lanes. Pain is scouting out where the remainder of the team is, but I guess they decide to just let this curse go. And instead go for their own boss. Meanwhile, SK also going for their boss. So not the best curse for PPP, they could have made this work a lot better, curse is almost up, so it didn't do all that much. But they will grab the boss, and bot lane is already gone, so if they push with this boss, maybe they can make something happen. Um, we have a lot of minions for PPP in the top lane, but those can swiftly be dealt with here by SK, and they have their own boss marching now. I would expect PvP to just march with their boss for a little bit, maybe get a pickup. Um, they go for the giants straight away as well. So boss and giants can do some decent damage here on the keep. 
and then they will um, Hearthstone back as soon as they see the boss in their top lane. But that said, Anterior will already position, so they will have to deal with this boss for first. Level 20 on both teams. Maybe we get time to check out the talents, but we'll, maybe we'll just see him in action. He can be taking a little bit of damage there, but not quite ready to move in. They will get the keep, of course, from the Raiders. And BKB getting more and more damage in. Meanwhile, the boss has reached the core on um, on PPP's side, so they should Hearthstone back, but they still want to dish out some damage here. I think they can take this team fight. There's Ufer coming in with the Divine Hurricane. Bright Wings take now. There's the Void Prism on Zarmini and Deathscape. BKB also in there. This was not a good Void Prism for them at all. Linked, taken out. Ufer does go down and Pain still alive so far. The core taking a lot of damage down to 34%. Jella still dishing it out, but Anubarek is taking out Jella solo as well. Can they get the kill here? I doubt it. He tried to de dish his dash back and forth on the core, but they do take out almost the entire team. Um, there was the buyback on Anubarek. And he's back at home. The boss, meanwhile, has been dealt with, but also 70% on the core on PvP's side. So we do have a little bit of time, check out the level 20 talents. Continuous wins on Brightwing, Twilight Archon on Tassadar, Resurgence on Anubarak, Bolt on Zeratul and Raynor, and Resurgence on Tyrael, Illidan, and, and no, never mind, Tyrael and Stitches. Illidan has Bolt of the Storm, Divine Hurricane on Uther, and Felsed has Last and all, and there comes the final move here by SK. They want to go for the kill as well. 50% on the core, everyone's returning. Anubarak is back in the fight, Luvi is in the fight. Nippolino still up, but they want to go for the kill. 14%, 10%, Felsit is taken out. 5%, 3%, 2%, 1! And there is the kill for SK. Really using their time. I mean, four, uh, 5 seconds here for Raynor and Tassila to return to the fight. Uh, that was some clutch timing by SK. I really didn't like that PvP overextended their welcome um, in, the, in grabbing that core. They really stayed for a little bit too long. They could have Hearthstone back, prevented damage by the uh, by the boss, and still be in a good position. I mean, that uh, Void Prism was not really. Uh, um, I mean, the Void Prism was amazing for PvP, but um, that could have bought them the time to get back. All right. So let's have a look at these statistics. Wow, a lot of takedowns here on SK's side. 20 on Feldstead, Ufer, and Illidan. 18 on Tyrael and 21 on Stitches. How did Deathscape make that happen? And Anubarak, well, I mean, of course, Viplino, he's always up in, in front. And Stitches got some amazing hooks in on Viplino. And SK, I gotta give it to them. I mean, they did a really good job always body blocking once Stitches got the hook in. So yeah, um, PPP not quite making the comeback happen. They did get a nice tribute, but uh, I feel like they should have returned once they did a little bit of damage on the core. And with their team still being alive, they could have defended just as well. And with only Brightwing or an Uberek and Brightwing back in the fight, uh, not nearly en not nearly enough defense on their core. All right, um, I did capture a couple of fights, so let's check it out. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, fellas. Meanwhile, we are waiting for the draft link to the third game. Um, one sec though, I think I heard an invite already coming up. So let me get in the game first in the lobby. Nope, nothing yet, so it's all good. All right. Now we have to find the right position. This was a little bit early in the game. All right, I wanna skip ahead too far. Yeah, I th yeah, this was the uh, Gorge on uh, Vipolino, and he was just caught completely out of position. 
And with Whippolino gone, uh, PPP's lineup does fall apart because he, I mean, he is their main tank. If he does go down, uh, you still have Raynor who doesn't quite uh, die as fast as the other assassins, and, and Tassadar who can ha has a lot of survivability, but not not nearly as much as Whippolino. So let's skip ahead. I think we had a fight again after this. Yep, indeed we did. I went for the um, for the middle encampment, and oh yeah, this was this incredibly weird engagement next to the tribute. Give me a sec, I got an invite. Okay. Sorry for always switching back and forth. Um, okay, so yeah, this was the really weird fight alongside the tribute, where it just all went back and forth. And we could see that PPP really t took their time to get in position. But I didn't like this approach that they took, all going down one lane. I mean, this can work uh, if you don't phase an Anubarak, but you shouldn't get into the habit of doing it. Because everyone bunched up, like we have uh, Rayna, Brightwing, and um, Zeratul, uh, and Tassadar down here. And that's just not a good idea whatsoever. And then the stun did come in, only getting Zamini and BZ, but it's not as bad. They can't really get the pickup, and then Zamini jumping in with his heroic. EKB with a follow-up. There was a little bit of disarray. Um, I think he wanted um, he wanted Illusion to go for Luvi as well, because he will switch targets later on, but not quite getting there. Um, Pain coming in a little bit too late, but they can they can still keep Luvi alive and pick off Tyrael. And then of course the dodge on the Shock and Arc was a good job here by PPP, but a Nubarak uh, was taken out. Let's check how that worked. Um, he was caught there in the middle, and he got a good chunk of damage in during the shock and awe. And then, again, body blocking out of Link, Deathscape, and Illidan. Taken out, uh, taken out a Nubarak, and then this is where the fight really turns. I mean, PvP made it work somehow and stayed in the game, but just because they did some amazing damage on Stitches beforehand, and Deathscape has to get completely out of the fight, there was another hook, uh, there was another uh, stun on Jella and Harry hook. And they were the only ones to stay in the fight. Now Zarmini goes way out of position to get the kill on uh, Zeratul and, or Brightwing. And Pain did get away, I think. This took Zarmini completely out of the fight and allowed Harry hook and Jella to control this since Stitches had to stay out of the fight as well. Otherwise, this would have or might have been a team wipe if uh, Zeratul would have just stayed, in, uh, if, if Illidan would have stayed in the fight. But that way, they were able to pick up Felstad and SK stayed in here, and then the whole hunt for Jella began. Alright, um, let me check if I got a link. Um, let me check if I get a link to the draft yet. Mm, doesn't look like it. Not quite yet. Nope, not quite. So we'll have a look at another replay. I think I did qu capture quite a few this time. Mm, this was during the first, uh, first big curse. Okay, let's skip ahead. I think there was a team fight incoming eventually.
First we got a steal on the knights because SK was not quite in position. Nope, that's not it. Nothing, nothing important happened here. Maybe in the beginning. Something must have happened. Must have happened somewhere. Is this awkward? Um, I thought there was a team fight happening here, but it doesn't look like they got someone in, out of this. By the way, PPP does have first pick in this next draft phase. Oh, probably a miscapture then. Okay. Yeah, this was the steal on the on the knights. And PPP went back. Tried to do some more damage here on the mid lane. And I think this is where they uh, got the gorge <laughs> on Raynor. And Nice, nice try here by Zeratul to get the Void Prism in and keep Ra um, Raynor alive, but I think he, yeah, he got it a little bit too close, so Raynor was trapped in there as well. But still, this was not too bad, I think Link was even trapped in here. And then Luvi jumping straight in, and Raynor of course taken out, he was so far behind enemy lands, there was no way for him to actually stay alive. And, I mean, Zarmini got really good um, heroic initiations in. He always tried to jump in the way and try to body block, um, not and so not concentrate on, on just assassination and ganking, but try to body block always with his ultimate. And he did a good job of that. Pain didn't get away, and this was, I think, almost an, a team wipe. Yeah, even Jella being trapped. Or was this actually where the hunt started for Jella? <laughs> I have no idea. I think he was hunted quite a few times this game. And this is the last fight um, at the Tribute. Initially, PvP didn't overextend or anything. They always stayed away. Then Link came in with a perfect, uh, yeah, almost perfect Divine Hurricane. Getting Pain, Vibolino, and Jella. Now, Feldstad, um only attacking Luffy. He should have uh, he should have aimed for pain. Um, that would have gotten him pain, Jella, and Vipolino because they were all standing and um, still stunned in the line. But they did want to go for that uh, Luvi kill, which does make sense. I mean that does uh, decrease survivability. And now the Void Prison came in, and um, in retrospect, I mean this this was pretty amazing. But this should have been their time to just turn around and get out of the fight, but they now they wanted to just commit to it, go for the core, and they got a lot of damage in, but they still had the boss there. Now Uther taken out, and I think this was their, the point where they said, okay, Uther is out of the fight, um, Tyrael is pretty low, we can just go for it, and then Vipolino dashing back, dashing back and forth alongside the core, doing some damage. Uh, same was done by uh, Tassila in his Archon form, but of course all of them were focused out and if I remember correctly only Anubarak had a Resurgent of the Storm. So not nearly enough... Mm, not nearly enough uh, defense that was available later on. Okay, I think the draft is up. Okay. There's the draft and the teams are ready. So, perfect timing. Let's jump into the draft then. And it's always first team, first ban. First Abathur ban. Oh, that's interesting. SK going for the ban on Zeratul. 
so they saw the impact that a zero tool had in that last game but thus this means that ppp gets stitches again and vipolino on stitches as you remember in that first game uh, was pretty incredible Yeah, I mean, I agree, uh, Repsolia, that they could have used the time to do damage on the core, but then they got so close to the core and only had taken out one lane that it was basically the decision do damage on the core and try to suicide and um, yeah, kill him outright or get away. Because if they if they would have taken out one more keep uh, earlier, they had more. Mm, yeah, a better vantage area to just go for the core and get out at the same time, but only having taken out one lane uh, That meant they had to get close to the core and um, Would have to just go for the core and not have any survivability later on Okay, first pickup by SK is Tychus. Tychus and Tassadar are going to SK and PPP can't rely on Zero Tool this game. But they could go for Nova. They did like her Nova in the first game. Zero Tool target ban on Pain. <laughs> yeah, um. Zero Tool does make sense. I mean, uh, after seeing his Void Prisms in the second game, um. And I think, uh, did they play him in the first Yep, of course they had him in the first game as well. Uh, also with some amazing Void Prisms, so um, you can always only get, go for one ban and Stitches or Zero Tool had to go and this time they show Zero Tool. And there is the counter pick on Uther. So this is the first time we'll see Uther on PPP's side. And let's see... Um, I'd like to see a counter pick of Nova on SK's side if they can. That would leave their warriors um, up for grabs for PPP. Oh, going for Brightwing so early on? Okay, that's interesting. Um, by the way, we're playing on Blackheart's Bay. Just to clear this up. And um, last game, PP, uh, in, the first, in the first match, Chen was played by SK, I believe. Okay, so Repso, you say that they should have just gone and focused down the core um, before Ufer was dead. Okay, I'll have a look again. Mm. Maybe that does make sense. Okay, where are we? That's not the one. Bakery gone. Uh, incoming Illidan for pain. They have a ban on Tyrael, which makes sense, and the ban of Nova by SK. So banning Nova and Zero Tool. <laughs> So, I think if they would have gotten three bands, we would have seen Zero Tool, Stitches, and Nova banned by SK. And the Tyrael banned by PPP makes total sense. And Vala is incoming. So, sorry, Techno. Uh, losing out on Illidan. But maybe, maybe they'll go for Illidan as the final pick. Would still be possible. I mean, SK was doing pretty fine with Illidan, so. Getting the counter pick, counter pick in there would make sense. An Uberak being picked by SK. So we're going back a little bit uh, for game one. Ooh, Zagara by PPP. I like that quite a bit. Um, this does mean they're going for a more meta-like, more meta-like composition, but 
maybe that's more their style. The first game could have been lucky, and then second game, I don't know, wrong decision making later on. But I'm still looking at this. Um, I'm still looking at this replay now. Okay, so there's Ufer jumping in. I'll show you guys. By the way, the final pickup here by SK is Arfis. So similar compositions out of these guys, which means um, it's gonna be longer team fights. But uh, once Zagara reaches her level 10 and has them all, that could turn things quite a bit. So I'm, I'm looking at this team fight again. And you say they should have just let Uther be, which is something you usually see in the team fight. So I'm kind of curious why they just didn't let him go. Okay, where's Uther? Uther jumped in sometime, somewhere around this time. Okay, there, there's Link jumping in. Little doom. Right wing's taken out. There comes the Void Prison. Now they still focus on Uther, you're right. But now they... Like, at least Jella starts uh, doing damage on the core. And Kane as well. And it was only Harry, Hook and Vipolino that... Uh, that tried to uh, go for Uther. Which I think you're right, they... But now it's uh, Jella, Harry, Hook... That's a little bit weird, you're right. I mean, they should have just gone straight for the core. We still had Jella and Harry Hook attacking Uther for a little bit longer. And especially Harry Hook, he could have gone in there and done a lot of damage to the core. But um, tried to save himself. Probably uh, a little bit of miscommunication going on. <laughs> Zagara is, by the way, murky. So I think everyone's about ready. Nope, not quite. Not all of the players are ready. Mm. <laughs> Moonlike. Oh, how can SK lose with that team composition? They got all the bad shit crazy OP heroes. I mean, they have Tychus, which is just an amazing damage dealer. Um, and Nubarak and Arthas for the CC. Um, Tassel are also a pretty good damage dealer in his Archon form. PPP's mix up is a little bit weirder, but they have Zagara and we're on Blackheart Space, so Zagara can just take bot lane. Um, she can, uh, yeah, she can lay siege to bot lane and doesn't need any help whatsoever. So that leaves, um, let's see who's gonna go roaming here. Um, that probably leaves uh, Shen and, or maybe Uther and Valor to go roaming, and uh, Stitches, Stitches probably taking mid, Shen taking top lane. Okay, they're about ready. I mean, in the end, it all comes down to the Moss by Vipli uh, by uh, Zagara. <laughs> it waddle around them. <laughs> Yeah, in the fight around around the core, they could have tried to um, they could have tried to walk around on the left side of the core, and then gotten a little bit out of the range of the heroes that were still trapped in the void prison, and that would have bought them a little bit of time to get more damage in, because you had like two heroes still retreating and um, still trying to stay alive. Instead, they should have just all focused down. It was a little bit of, of weird miscommunication going on. Alright. So let's get started. This is the third and final game here in the semi-finals. Oh, Epand, you wanna get some German casting in? Sure, um, there's gonna be German casting again. Um, once... Um, Think for the uh, Rocket vs. Sphere Invitational I'm casting in Germany. Alright, but let's get started here with the game. We have on the left side here on Blackheart's Bay, playing with Pain is Pain, 
They took the first game, but then barely lost out in the second match and now have to go for the third and final semi-final here in the Arcana, Arcana Heroes Cup. Here they are, playing with Pain is Pain, and they have Ufer, Bitches, Shan, Vala, and Zagara, who's taking the bot lane. Their opponents in the red are SK Gaming. They have Nubarak, Arthas, Brightwing, and Ikus. In the mid, everyone's going for the tower, but we have an initial grab here going on for PPP. And the last hero, by the way, is VZ on Tassada here for SK. Let's let's jump back into the tower. Oh, meanwhile, SK did grab the tower again. And there's the engagement. Stitches is taken out so quickly here. SK getting first blood and maybe growing for another grab here. No, Happy Hope does get away. And they never had a second stun available. And this does allow them to uh, go a little bit crazy here on the chest. BKB back in the fight as well, but that's five coins in top lane for SK. Down here it looks a little bit better for PPP. Lino grabbing a lot of coins, but Linked uh, got two as well. But I think that was still from the top chest. So Tassila fighting against uh, Zagaro down in bot lane. And there's a turn in by Vipolino. Five coins in already for, for PPP. And let's check the coins. Oh, that's already a lot of coins on SK's side. So they could go for a turn in pretty soon. And PPP grabbing their easy giants in the bot lane. Have a look at the talents. We have Conjurer's Pursuit on Uther. That's interesting, um, getting the regen globes a little bit more mana. And we have Heavy Slam on Stitches, Reconstitution on Zagara, uh, Deadly Strike on Vala, uh, on Chen, and Rancor on Vala. Extended Spikes on Anubarak, Armor Piercing Rounds on Tychus, Frozen Waste on Arthas, and Overload on Tassada, and only Brightwing taking Bribe. One of the only games where we've only seen uh, one team uh, getting bribe. Oh, Zagara is in trouble down here. KB, the escape, and BZ moving in. Oh, and there comes the slow, and Zagara is completely trapped. Getting the second kill already here for SK. They have to fight the, the Giants now, but shouldn't be too much of an issue for them. Blino and Prane trying to help out in the back. But can't really get an engagement angle there. Especially against BKB. And who they even want to topple this off with the Knights in bot. And I think, uh, yep, Vela has to port back, losing a little bit of XP again in the mid lane here for PPP. This is not a good start for them whatsoever. Oh, nice stun coming out of Anubarak. Here comes the Polymorph on Jella. And, yep, Knights on their way on the bot lane. Luckily, Pain and Vipolino are in position to help Jella out and um, will be able to deal with these knights uh, pretty quickly here. The bans were Anubarak and Tyrael by PPP and Zeratul and Nova by SK. So, selective bans on SK's side, a little bit more general bans on PPP's. And Vipolino wants to stop them from turning in. They have a lot of coins already, six coins, that would give them enough to make the barrage happen. I think they're turning in, I don't know exactly why, but um, probably just cheating BKB there. And Link's in the fight, Ooh, Pain caught up in position, there's the slow and the follow-up stun, BKB jumping in there, and they do get the kill. Wow, you guys were right, I mean, uh, this composition works out really well so far for BKB, uh, for SK. And BKB is just the boss on that Anubarak. Chests are up, and looks like BKB will go for the grab here, getting at least one coin out of this. Two coins. Vipolino is in position, but BKB, of course, with the deep dive, he can always get away. And there's the hook follow up. 
Nice, nicely timed hook, but oh jeez, that was so close. I think he got close to um, Viplino's little acid, uh, acid pool there. And there's a team fight coming in. Ooh, Vipolino missing his hook on BZ. So they will have to turn around. And yeah, first barrage was here for for SK. Only two more coins for PvP to get the next barrage going. But they got some damage done here on their fort. It's almost gone in the mid lane. Let's show your enemies a jolly good time. Like and both teams are level 9. Not going to overextend in that next team fight. And they already got some damage on these towers, which should allow them to uh, go for the final blow on the fort if they have the entire team in position. But first, going for some more coins. They already have a lot of coins, so maybe enough for the next barrage already? No, not quite. Not quite. Missing, uh, I think, one more. And there comes the final blowout of SK, going straight for the fort, and PvP letting it go. They want to use that time to go for the turn-in. No, interestingly enough, Chen moving down bot lane. I don't know what he was looking for here. Instead grabbing the final coins, they probably should have used that time to go for the turn-in. Had a couple of seconds where they uh, were undisturbed. And now they have to deal with this uh, SK army that's here just waiting at Blackheart and just paid up. So next barrage is incoming. Top lane taking a lot of damage already. And now we have the barrage alongside the knights. Ruby is getting there but oh, counters, uh, counter push down here. Giants on their way as well. SK is in complete control of this game right now. They really had, um, yeah, they had an amazing time just counterpicking uh, or really banning these heroes that PvP plays so well with. And this kind of forced them into the composition they have now, and they have no real way to get started in these team fights. <clears throat> I mean, they are level uh, above level 10 now, they have their level 10 talents. So let's see how they can turn this around with Zagara now and the Maw. And let's have a look at their level 10 talents. Divine Storm on Uber, Forge on Stitches, Devouring Maw on Zagara, Storm Earth and Fire on Chen, Rain of Vengeance on Vala, and Uberak going for Locust Swarm, Commander Odin on Tychus, Arthas Army of the Dead, Archon on Tassadar, and Linkiel on Brightwing. That's interesting. Um, they might have chosen a, a, the Blink Heal uh, just because. Uh, they want to have like the most sustainy composition ever and they knew okay we already did pretty good here in, in the early game um, why just not top it off and uh, go for the really safe uh, go for the really safe route and there's the steel of the knights just to pile it on top already two more kills two forts down and now the knights in bot lane Meanwhile, the barrage by PPP did take out the mid lane, finally. But they will have to stop this onslaught here on the bot lane. And so far, Stitches still not in position. They need Stitches in that fight as well. And Pain is not quite as daring as BKB was um, with jumping into the fight. They really want to have Vipolino go for the hook and uh, get a decent hook to get the fight started. And so far, it has not been happening. Oh, SK is waiting in the shadows. They knew they want to. They know that PPP wants to go for that fort. And there comes the surprise attack, but PPP getting out of position early on. They knew that this was coming. There's the hook, and Beezy with the face shift does get away. But they did grab the seed shine, so. Uh, PvP has to stay in lane and SK is in a good position to grab some more coins. Is anyone going for the top coins so far? Nothing yet, but they are going to go there as well now. Tassadar on the move. So they will get both coins. 
and uh, really the objective game as well. Well, they already have enough coins for the next turn and, and the one after that. Oh, not quite, but almost. Almost. DPP looking to get uh, to surprise him at the turn in. You don't want to waste too much time and lose out on too much XP. So instead, going for the counter blow here on the fort. Really want to even out the fort game. Um, two forts down already on their side, so they want to kill this one. And. Ooh, being really cautious. I don't know, they don't have the best map vision. Uh, Jella should do a little bit better job just pushing that creep, giving him the map vision. Now she is going for the easy camp. A little bit indecision coming out of PvP. This is not what we saw in the first two games. They can't, they can't seem to get a foothold in this game. Easy camp being grabbed, but taking the next barrage to the face in the bot lane. This is gonna kill their fort here. Six more cannonballs are in the ship, so yeah, fort will go down. And PvP needs to make something happen here. Um, the skies are darkening for them. Possibly with a um, with a go on the boss, but still one and a half minutes left on the boss timer. And SK almost up for their level 16 talents. Ooh, they might have a chance to go for a nice team fight. BKB caught out of position. Chain pain jumps in. Oh, the hook misses, but he is slowed. Link jumps in there. There's the heroic out of Valor. And Luvi with the stun on BKB, but he's just not taking any damage. And now SK returning to the fight. Pain and uh, Harry Hook pretty low. Harry Hook taking a lot of damage, and she is taken out. SK still alive, going for Luvi straight away. Pain caught out of position, and Link is pretty low. Maybe they can get him. And looks like there is the final blow by Pain, but can he jump away out of this fight? Luvi is pretty low as well. Zagara went down in the meantime, and Stitches might fall here. Yep, there's the final blow out of Arthas. Pain uh, popping his ultimate. Can he get away? No, nice body blocking coming out of Deathscape. And Pain tricking them, going back and forth here. But Deathscape will get here with the yeah, final slow, and somebody getting the kill. Wow, uh, pretty good team fight by SK. Um, just piling on the damage. Did take out Valor and Zagara early on. And then I, I don't think Zagara got her maw in, in that fight whatsoever. So far, I don't think we've seen it in action at all. Now let's check out the level 16 talent. Stitches took Fishing Hook, Arm Focus on Uther, Bru Brute Expansion on Zagara, Combination Attack on Shen and Blood for Blood on Valor. Then there's the Rewind on Nubrak and so to somehow um, just even stay longer in these team fights, Stone Skin on both Arthas and Tychus, Dimensional Warp on Tesla and Hardened Focus on Brightwing. So SK really wants to rule this game and so far they're doing a good job. Oh, the hook misses Zamini by an inch. We've almost gotten him there. And now they have to deal with the boss. And SK looking to grab a couple more points behind this. And with the next barrage they even gonna hit the keeps already. Which is pretty tough uh, as it is. Boss making its way towards the gates, but um, PvP just... I think they can deal with him before he does too much damage on these gates, but the next barrage will do, um, will do just that. And there's no way to stop that as of now. Stitches is in position to defend this bot lane, and there was a steal on the Giants now. So Giants on their way to do more damage, and oh yeah, they'll use the time to pay up, and at the same time go for the Knights here. The neutral knights will go to SK one more time. They're just doing a, an amazing job keeping control of these camps, always letting them march towards PPP, not giving them the chance to somehow recoup recuperate their losses and get in the um, yeah get a leg up again. Okay, so Jella did get them all on that uh, bot fort, but apparently it wasn't quite enough. I think I did capture that fight, so we can have a look later on. 
and more and more coins being collected for SK. They already have enough, uh, enough for the next barrage. Just didn't want to risk anything since they knew that uh, PPP was back on the move on the map after they dealt with the sea giants in the bot lane. But now they know, okay, um, they have to deal with the giant uh, with the knights, and uh, this does give them the time to go for um, go for one more turn in. And it's doing some fire here. Fireworks are up. Keep is taken out. That's the first keep going down here, and the next one will also take some damage in the top lane. And at the same time, they're doing split push down here in bot. Hope not quite getting anything. Oh, SK is playing this so incredibly safe. They don't want to lose. Um, they don't want to lose by surprise attack or uh, anything of that sort. Easy camp should be back up. Nope, not yet. Um, and there's the rotation towards top. Only one level damage so far for SK, but um, complete teamfight control out of them. But they know the power of the Maul, so they're not going to risk anything. They know they can just safely go for their own uh, for their own knights. Oh, maybe Shen can make something happen here, but Deskate did return. And they have to deal with the catapults now in the mid lane. Oh, SK setting up a trap. They know that PPV wants to surprise him at the Knights. And there's the hook on Death Cape. And the Gorge follow up. Uh, will we see a mod to stop SK from coming in? Yes, but only getting one hero. Death Cape pretty low, and they take him out. Uh, Odin form is pop. Pain is pretty low as well. Zagara taken out. Harry Hook singled off. But can he get back into the fight? Oh, he's trying to. But taking a lot of damage by Odin. Pain did pop his, uh, pop his ultimate. But they're also incredibly low. SK is on the hunt. They want to get Harry Hook. Pain is pretty low, and he's trapped back there, jumping away. And the polymorph does kill him in the end. SK again getting two for one in this team fight, and now having the time to pay up again and possibly get a couple more coins in. Uh, PPP is on the back foot. They will have to stay in base and defend the catapults one more time. So let's have a look at these uh, no, 16 talents we did have, but um, the coins. So 6, 8 coins. Ah, not quite enough. Not quite enough for the next pay up. But they're collecting more and more. Even Link just soloing the giants right there. And, oh, I like that split. Um, going, for the, going for more coins in bot and then taking the knights uh, in the top lane at the same time. Not giving PPP any chances here to um, catch them off guard, since they did have pretty good map vision with all the minions going on in all lanes. And more and more coins coming in for SK. They're really winning Blackheart just with the objectives, and that's the way you should play this map. Ah, Jupilino not really on top of his hooks these, uh, this game. Knights are duking out here in top. Both knights are. Um, they will keep kill each other almost at the same time. Now oh, PvPs will survive a little bit longer, but not all that much. And now we are almost at level 20. PvP needs to stay out of this fight. SK will have complete control. But maybe they can make something happen. Kane jumping in there. Um, BKB getting behind enemy lines and First one to fall is again Zagara. They always focus her out initially. There's a polymorph on Luby. And Vala is taken out as well. Pain so low, but he does pop his ultimate. And will get away, but Stitches is taken out. Luby on the run. Uh, there comes the storm to stop her. BKB coming in. And with a follow-up stun and a nice body block, they can stop this. There's the nuke out of Odin just to top us off. And that's 5 for 0. The entire team taken out. Wow, what a monster kill out of SK, and this allows them to go for the keep and probably go for the core straight after. Yeah, they even just stutter step the keep and go straight for the core. Um, still 20 seconds um, at least on these first heroes, so this is going to be enough for SK, and they will take that final game and move on to the grand finals here in the Arcana Heroes Cup number one, and they will face off against Team Alternate. 
Wow, what a stump ASK, I didn't expect this whatsoever, I mean, the first game just looked so amazing for PvP, even with their standard. Um, then the second game was kind of close, I mean, SK um, had a firm grasp, but uh, somehow PvP made, made um, a comeback at least possible, and in this last game, they never had any chances whatsoever. Um, I mean, look at the mechanics here. Um, that's just how you win on Black Hearts Bay. Um, going for those coins, um, having a firm grasp, always going for the camps, and that's how SK managed to win this. Um, also, pretty good team fights later on. I mean, uh, the Moss never really hit. They always focused out Zagara if they could. Um, maybe Jella was a little bit too hesitant to throw down the Maw. He always wanted to get a good Maw in, and uh, I mean, it. it it's of course it's amazing if you get three heroes in there, but um, if you get one vital hero out of the fight, that also works. Yeah, wow. I'm still kind of blasted by this uh, by this result. Of course, if Bakery would have played, uh, this might have looked completely different.